is section 3.6, and we're going to talk about polynomial and rational inequalities. And actually, we should talk about polynomial inequalities. We're not going to do rational. Some example of polynomial inequalities would be something like this. x squared plus 5x plus 4 is greater than 0. 4x squared plus 7x is less than or equal to negative 3. 9x squared plus 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 x squared minus, or x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9 less than 0, and x cubed less than or equal to 4x squared. So basically it's a polynomial equation, but we just have the inequality signs in there. Okay? So let's look at this graph here. Let's see what's really going on here. If I were to graph um, a polynomial equation and um, we're looking at it as an inequality, we need to look at something called the boundary points. And I abbreviate boundary points as B, P. And boundary points are just basically your zeros. Your x-intercepts. And so if we're looking at the um, this equation that we graph, we're looking at the polynomial being greater than zero, you're talking about this part of the graph right here. And if you're looking at it being less than zero, you're talking about this part of the graph right here. Okay, so let's look at the procedure for solving polynomial inequalities. Um, basically, we're going to um, make sure that we have zero on one side of the inequality. And then we're going to solve it um, equal to zero. And to do that, we're doing that because we want to find the boundary points. And then we're going to locate the boundary points on the number line, and that will divide the number line to intervals. And then step four, I actually do something different. Step four, I don't do what they say here. I actually um, test values in the interval. That came from the boundary points. So I do this differently than the program. My math lab does it. So if you ask for help, um, in the program or help me solve this or do an example, they're going to do this a little bit differently than I do it. Okay, so Let's go ahead and do the first example. We're going to solve and graph the solution set on a real number line for 2x squared plus x is greater than 15. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and rewrite this with 0 on one side. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. So I end up with 2x squared plus x minus 15 is greater than 0. Now to find the boundary points, we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. So I get 2x squared plus x minus 15 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve this um, using zero factor rule. And here I'm going to go ahead and just use the AC method. So I get 2x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 15 equals 0. I get 2x minus 5 plus 3 would be 2x minus 5 equals 0. So my two factors are 2x minus 5 and x plus 3 equals 0. So my boundary points are x equals 5 over 2 and negative 3. And how to get 5 over 2, I did um, 2x minus 5 equals 0, added 5 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 5 divided by 2, and that's where the um, 5 halves came from. Okay. So now that you have the boundary points, now you're going to go ahead and, and divide your number line into intervals based on those values. So I'm going to draw a number line here. And I have negative 3, and I have 5 halves. What we're going to do is we're going to test a point or test a value in each one of these intervals. And we're going to see if it makes the statement true. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little more space here. So I'm going to erase all this and give myself some more space. So we're going to test a value in each of these intervals. So a value you can pick, you can pick any value you want as long as it's right here. So negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, those are all be great values. So I'm going to test negative 4. So we'll put that negative 4 into the original inequality. So I have 2 times negative 4 squared plus negative 4. Is that going to be greater than 15? 
That gives me 2 times 16 plus a negative 4, which gives me 32 plus a negative 4. And again, you can type it on your calculator, and the calculator will give you the answer, too. Um, I get 28. Is 28 greater than 15? Yes. So that means that that is going to be good. That, that interval can be good. So let's test a value in here. So I'm going to test a value between negative 3 and 5 halves. The great value would be if we test 0. I'm using different colors. I can see my word clearer. So I'm going to test 0. I'm going to put 0 into the original inequality. I get 2 times 0 squared plus 0. Is that greater than 15? So I get 0 plus 0. Is that greater than 15? And 0 greater than 15? No. So that's not good. And then I'm going to test a value in this last interval, something more than 5 halves, so I could test 3 or 4. So I'll test 3. So 2 times 3 squared plus 3, is that greater than 15? I get 2 times 9 plus 3, which is 18 plus 3, which is 21. Is 21 greater than 15? Yes. That tells me when I graph my um, solution set, let's go back and make it a little smaller here, to negative 3 and 5 halves, that the values here are good, and the values here are good. And for the air rotation, you're going to go from negative infinity to negative 3, or from 5 halves to infinity. Okay, but go ahead and pause the video and try the next one on your own. Um, do the exact same stuff that I did here. I want you to graph your solution set and then um, date, date your um, solution in interval rotation. Okay, so I, on your own problem, I went ahead and did this. I um, set the inequality equal to, or inequality on one side equal to zero. And then I went ahead and set the entire thing, uh, change the inequality down to an equation. Found the boundary points of five and negative four. I tested values um, in each one of those intervals and found that um, these two intervals here, here, and here were good. And so I went ahead and showed the graph um, of the solution and then the interval notation. Okay, so let's do another example. And let's solve this polynomial inequality. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and set one side equal to zero. And here is the original inequality. So we're going to subtract 4x from both sides and subtract 4 from both sides, and we end up getting x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is less than equal to 0. And then to find the boundary points, we're going to go ahead and solve the equation. And then we'll use the grouping process. And I end up factoring, and I get the different two squares here. So I have x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I actually have a bunch of boundary points of x equals negative 1, negative 2, and 2. So I go ahead and um, test values. Let's see if I can get them in place here. Or uh, at my intervals, I have the negative 1, or negative 2, the smallest number, the negative 1, and then I have two. So I actually have one, two, three, four intervals to test. And I'm going to test. I'm going to test negative three here. And I'm going to test um, between negative two and negative one. I'll test negative 1.5. And between uh, negative one and two, I'll test zero. And something more than two, I'll test three. And let's go back to my original inequality, which is up here. And I'm going to find right here so I can see it. x cubed plus x squared less than or equal to 4x plus 4. I'm going to write down here so I can see it. Okay, so I'm going to test the negative 3. I'm going to do it in red. So here I have um, negative 3 to the third power plus negative 3 squared. Is that less than or equal to um, 4 times negative 3 
plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator here, and you can do this by hand, let's save us some time. And I'm just going to type in negative 3 to the third power plus negative 3 squared, and I get negative 18. Oops. And I get negative 12 plus 4, which is negative 8. And is that true? Is negative 18 less than negative 8? And that's true. So this is good. And I'm going to test negative 1.5. I get negative 1.5 to the third power plus negative 1.5 squared. Is that less than or equal to 4 times negative 1.5 plus 4? And I get negative 1.125. Is that less than or equal to 2? The answer is no. And then I'm going to test 0. I'm going to write a little bit smaller here. So I get 0 to the third power plus 0 squared. Is that less than or equal to 4 times 0 plus 4? Well, it's 0 on this side. We get 4 on this side. Is 0 less than or equal to 4? And that's true. Okay. And then the last number I'm going to test would be the number 3. So I have 3 cubed plus 3. 3 squared, is that less than or equal to 4 times 3 plus 4? 27 plus 9 is 36, and 12 plus 4 is 16, and that is not true. So I graph this, um, if I have space up here to do it, what it down here. Graph this is going to be from negative 2, negative 1, so I know I'm going to shade in this part of the graph. Let me go ahead and draw a little bit bigger so you can see this. I have negative 2, negative 1, and 2. I'm going to shade in this part of the graph. And then notice how I have the um, less than or equal sign. So I'm going to go ahead and include the negative 2 because we can have it equal to that. And I'm going to shade in this part of the graph. And I'm going to include the endpoint or the zero or the boundary point because we said it could be equal to it. And so my inner rotation is going to be from negative infinity to negative 2, bracket, parentheses, or from negative 1 to 2. Okay? So go ahead and do the next problem on your own. I'm going to have you pause the video and then restart it and check your answer. Okay, so the on your own problem, you should have had the boundary points of negative 3, negative 1, and 1. And then when you test um, each interval, you have the interval here on the left-hand side and the middle right here that work out. And your graph should look like this. And then your annotation should be from negative infinity to negative 3, including the negative 3. Or from negative 1 to 1, including both those endpoints. Let's go ahead and I think, um, let's see, I might not have time to finish these next two examples in the 15 minute allotment. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now, and then the next part we'll do the next two examples. We have two more examples. Yep, and that'll be it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop the video and then I'll finish up the next part.